Hey there, Jim Johnson from Accent Help here. And I've worked my way through the vowels that are very common in American speech. And now I want to talk about the diphthongs, but I want to do an intro to the diphthongs first. So there are five different diphthongs that are really commonly used to express the way that American diphthongs are realized in general. Now we're talking about sort of generic and this sort of, I don't know where you're from, American-esque sound. So we have the price diphthong, the mouth diphthong, face, goat, and choice. Now the words that I'm using come from J.C. Wells. These are the words that he commonly uses for, uh, to say, these are the lexical set words. Okay, so when I'm talking about the choice, a choice word, it's all the other oi words like that, like boy and voice and those kinds of things. So those are lexical set words. So you'll notice with all of these, there are two symbols, and that's why they're commonly called diphthongs. You could sort of think of, um, of a single symbol by itself as a monothong, right? Which uh, I'm wearing a monothong right now. Was that too much information? Anyway, so these diphthongs, or diphthongs, however you'd like to pronounce that really, uh, they have two elements to them. And you'll notice that the second half of each of these, there's some that are very common. We've got three that have this one that looks like a small capital I, and we have three of these that look like, a, or two of these that look like a horseshoe. So these are basically like the E sound, price, face, choice. And these are like the O sound, mouth, goat, right? So they're almost a W-like sound. These second half ones, they're usually less of an element of the diphthong. So they tend to be shorter. So it's very common for a lot of people to write them all the time with a shortening little it's not actually a diacritic, it's a suprasegmental, but a little symbol over the second half that says, hey, this is shorter, this is less. Now that said, these are also some symbols, some uh, 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 IPA symbols that occur a little bit inside of the vowel quadrilateral, and so they're less realized or less sort of distinct already. So that's why whether you write the shortening above it or not, that's kind of more individual choice, I would say. Then I will also say that you might notice that, well, I almost think of them as E and U, price and mouth. You might think of them more going in that direction. Go, oo, oo, oot, the goose vowel and the fleece vowel. But the deal is, because the second half tends to be shorter and a little bit more thrown away, it doesn't tend to get as fully realized. It tends to be something that's like on the way there, but doesn't quite arrive there. Which is why, and I think it's pretty accurate, why I think that most of the time people use these as the second half instead of these more distinct sounds. Because um, they get less stress, so they don't, or less time even, so they don't get as much realization. So you're on your way there. So I think it's pretty accurate to use these in general as the second half of the diphthongs. And it's what you're going to see in most pronouncing dictionaries and things like that. So I think it's really useful to go with what you'll see in most sources and then we'll tweak it from there. Now, most of these other symbols are not the ones, if you've gone through all of the different vowels that I already went through in another part of this series, most of these are not on that list. This A, we used a different A, ah, and this is more like ah. I like to think of this as the Pakikar and Havad Yad. It's more forward in the mouth instead of further back. The ah sound like father, although a lot of people start to creep it towards this, but Anyway, that was in another set of things. Then we also have the A and the O, A, O, which don't tend to occur on their own, except that they do in a ton of accents. We'll cover that when we get to those. But in generican, those don't tend to occur on their own. 
And then finally we have oi, which is really, really problematic because this open O, the one that looks like a backward C, this one we did go through. We went through that as potentially the thought vowel, but most Americans don't round it this much. We actually do reduced rounding. That's a diacritic for reduced lip rounding. And um, we just don't tend to round it as much. Aww. 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 Thought. Thought. It tends to be more open for most Americans. Not all, because like when you get to New York, it tends to be more rounded. Thought. That's what I thought. Some people think of that as the coffee vowel. Aww. Aww. But for most Americans, it's a little more open when it's on its own, but then when you put it in the diphthong, it's actually the more rounded version of it. Also, when you put an R after it, it tends to be the more rounded version of it. It's kind of confusing, but this is the way that these tend to be written in pronouncing dictionaries. So I really want to work based off of the way that you'll most commonly see them, and then we'll tweak them from there to try to express how are they used in various accents so that you you have some sources that you can still turn to. So those are the real basics of diphthongs and the way that they tend to be written when people utilize them. Now, when we get into specific diphthongs, we'll start to talk about tweaks, ways that they happen in a variety of accents, but also about, mm, you know, even in generic, and we don't say it the way that it tends to be written. We tend to do something a little bit different with like a relaxed generalized Americanish accent. So Americanish, you could think of it as that. It's American, right? So uh, one final thing that I will say is that it's not uncommon at all for the first half of a diphthong to get extremely neutralized, right? It's not uncommon at all. So the little X that I wrote so badly there, the little X above it means mid-centralized, sort of moving it towards a schwa. So some degree of mid-centralization is super duper common with those. Um, the other thing, I told you that was the last thing and I lied. The final thing that I will maybe say, maybe the final thing, is that diphthongs, it's really common for them to get extremely messed up if they're followed by an L sound or if they are followed by an R sound it really can mess some things up. So if you have a word like file or fire, there are a lot of people who will say the file was the file. Instead of file, the file was... So many Americans will do that, and it'll happen in other accents as well. And also, the fire was... They put the fire out, far out. It almost starts to sound like far, far. And that's not just in the stereotypical southern accent, but throughout. And that can happen with all of these. Fail or mayor oftentimes becomes they failed the they failed. They failed. Or becomes the mayor was the mayor was. So it sounds like they felled a tree instead of failed. And it may sound like a horse instead of somebody who's in charge of a city, right? The mayor. The mayor, the mayor of Eastwood, for example. So that's sort of an intro to the diphthongs before getting into some of the details. If you want to do a deep dive into generic and accents, I have materials designed for actors on accenthelp.com. Specifically, you can look at the generic materials for that generalized generic American accent. Mm -hmm.